Hi everyone. Uh, this is Brady from Sentinel. Uh, today we'll talk about how we made Lydia run 15 times faster. So just some background, Lydia is an essential software to uh, for indexing the Filecoin blockchain. Uh, it provides data extraction and analysis compatibility. A few things that Lydia can do is to, for example, extracting blocks, message receipts, uh, and uh, the actor state changes such as minor sector events, market deals, uh, and uh, FEVN data. So the, the main problem with Lily previously was the, uh, the infra cost. And that's probably the, the top, um, uh, top complaint from our, from our users. Um, and because some certain tasks that requires uh, a lot of resources and time to process uh, the data. And uh, once the uh, time um, exceeds 30 seconds, because that's a, that's a duration of an epoch, then we, are, we will not be able to keep up with the chain um, so in this case, we need to process the task in parallel. We need to run multiple Lily, Lily nodes in order to keep up with the chain. Um, and this can increase uh, infra cost significantly. So for example, a five node cluster uh, of Lily nodes will cost more than $10,000 a month. And uh, uh, in the past, one vendor uh, even quoted us uh, like 1.5 million for a two year support contract to operate Lily and uh, the database. So here's a diagram of the Lily architecture. So it is a specialized Lotus node. So it imports the uh, library from Lotus, IPOD, and uh, actors, et cetera. So the main components are the indexer, processors, and uh, the exporter. And here's a diagram of the distributed worker pattern. Uh, like what I mentioned, when we need to run multiple nodes, we need to set up um, um, this infrastructure. So it contains notifier, the message queue, and workers. So though this, um, this, this, this pattern will um, scale horizontally, uh, but it will get uh, expensive uh, really quickly. And uh, um, I, I was surprised when I saw this um, and um, it, it requires a distributed system in order to parse, uh, to extract Filecoin data. But I was told that it's because like uh, the, the state comparison between epochs is very expensive operation. Uh, although I'm not convinced, um, so I decided to look into it further. So we start investigating into uh, the performance bottleneck. So we, we try to start with the most uh, time consuming task, which involves like the market deal data. So you can see that here, uh, the task process duration for market deal proposal is more than one and a half minute. So we uh, enabled a, a tracing um, feature in Lily. So here's a simple trace for processing one tip set in Lily. So the total time spent for processing one tip set is one minute and 33 seconds. Uh, we spend most of the time uh, on deal proposal processor. And within a deal proposal processor, you can see uh, we're doing, we spend all the time doing AMT.div. So what does that mean? So AMT is an IPOD data structure uh, to store an array of data. And AMT.div is to compare the difference between two arrays. And then um, below that, we can see we also spend quite a quite amount of time on export data, uh, which is uh, the actor state. We spend 20 seconds to just process the actor state data. And uh, for the drill down, we, we, re, we realized that we're making one database call per row, uh, which is definitely not right, And but it's an easy fix. So in order to understand why it's so expensive to do the empty diff, uh, I reviewed the, the coding IPOD empty library and eventually discovered a bug in the library that's causing an unnecessary tree traversal. So in order to explain that, um, I draw a diagram to to demonstrate how we compare to two AMT arrays. So an AMT node, AMT is actually a tree structure. So each node will have links or the actual values. So the links will point to other um, AMT node and, and there's a CID associated with each link. And the values uh, are only stored on the leaf node. Uh, so you here we can, uh, think of the V1, V2 as the, the deal proposal. And so we have an array of deal proposal. And so we are comparing deal proposal between two epoch. We have a state one from previous epoch and state two for the current epoch. Um, so when we are comparing uh, the AMT, we look at a CID associated with, with the link first. So CID is calculated, it's a, it's a content uh, ID, right? So it's calculated based on the content of the subtrees pointing to. So if the CIDs are the same, it means that uh, the subtree has the exact same values. So we don't have to uh, compare it uh, further. So in this case, well, when you look at the, the first link in the root node, 
uh, we saw the both CID1. So uh, we stopped there. And then we look at on the other side, we saw CID2 and CID5. So we know that the content of a subtree uh, is, is different. So you have to find out the actual different value. We do it recursively and eventually we'll find out that uh, in one of the node, uh, the, the value V6 is changed to V7. Okay, so this is how uh, the empty div should work. But the bug I, well, I discovered is that uh, even though when the CID is, is the same, we try to we still try to navigate uh, down into all its children nodes. Uh, this is especially bad because that means we are loading uh, every node from the disk into memory and just to find out that uh, the values are the same in, in, in the end. So that ex explains the high CPU and IO usage uh, whenever involves like uh, a huge state uh, comparison. So a similar bug is also found in IPOD HEM library. Um, so the, the fixes for um, both libraries are simple. And uh, we also optimize the state, actor state persistent uh, to batch insertion mechanism. So the result, um, the market deal proposal execution time reduced from 100 seconds to 0.5 seconds. Uh, actor state persistent time uh, reduced from 20 seconds to 0.2 seconds. The time to process one epoch reduced from 100 seconds to six seconds. Uh, this is actually, especially um, meaningful because once the process time for one epoch is, is lower, it's is, um, shorter than 30 seconds, we long, no longer need a um, cluster setting. Uh, so we can now run everything on one single instance. And uh, the amount of infra cost uh, is reduced from $10,000 to $1,000. And I think now um, everyone is, 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 is very affordable uh, for everyone who wants to run uh, UD nodes on their own. So next I will talk about impact, uh, I'll give it to Steph. Yeah, thanks Bertie. Um, so all of these Im massive improvements have resulted in very positive feedback from um, key Lily users such as Engram. Um, they are now able to use Lily and archival snapshots to backfill F FEVM data, specifically contracts data. Um, not only that, since Lily is uh, performant now, we can add more complex uh, processing tasks instead of doing this in a separate data processing pipeline, which I did previously to Bootstrap. So thank you to Terry for uh, baking that into Lily. So um, now our Lily node operators are able to do that themselves without having to create another um, service for just extracting contract data. Additionally, Starboard, um, another one of our key um, customers is also has been very satisfied with the performance and they expect that the cost of running Lily nodes will be more affor affordable for them going forward. Um, and that hopefully reduces the dependency between them and us. Um, moreover, um, uh, because of the um, reduced batch processing time, um, this also means uh, actual financial cost savings, not only for ourselves, but also for uh, node operators, and actually also for our batch processing job that we have in flight at the moment. Here are some resources uh, from our team. Um, Birdie has written a write-up for the Lily performance optimization for people who are interested. Um, our, no our Notion page, um, our roadmap, and also we have uh, started a new RFC um, uh, documentation to better uh, collaborate with other teams and other PLN companies. And you can reach us on Phil Sentinel Slack channel as usual. Thank you.